Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another edition of The Fishing Teacher here and much appreciate you guys checking today's video out. Got a good one today. We're gonna to be giving you guys a foundational uh, discussion on treble hook sizes and length as far as uh, you know how long the shank of a treble hook is and, and the bite gap on it and talk a little bit about um, you know what you need to have on each lure in order to maximize its fish hooking ability and to not hurt the action of the lure at all. So sort of the fine line there we're gonna get into. So I think you guys will enjoy it. So before we get started, guys, I just wanted to give you a reminder about our Fish the Moment Lake Map Breakdowns. If you guys are, are uh, struggling to find fish on your favorite lake, um, this is a great resource. Um, gives you 40 GPS waypoints uh, to go to, tips and advice on how to fish each spot. And if the lake you fish is not on our website, you can book a virtual lesson with me and we can go over any lake in the country. So I'll put the uh, Lake Map Breakdown link in the description of this video. Much appreciated. Okay, guys, let's get into this a little bit here. So um, here's what we're talking about here. If you're not familiar with it, if you guys are, you know, starting out not familiar, the uh, the distance here, guys, between, here, here's what's called the shank of the hook. The thing in the center is the shank. And this is the point of the hook here. And the distance between the point of the hook and the shank is called the uh, bite gap diameter here. And then the, uh, the sh this is the hook shank here. So the hook shank link length is referred to how long it is from the top here to the bottom. Now, what happens is this this right here is considered a short shank hook. Most treble hooks are maybe 25% longer shank here. So this is a, sh a short shank hook and this is what's called a EWG bend. There's a variety of bends. You got round bends, EWGs, O'Shaughnessy's, um, and we'll do future videos. But for today, I wanna talk about the, uh, the bite gap and the length of the shank here what why it's important first of all when you're when you're talking about using a, a uh, treble hook on any type of a hard bait like a crankbait you want to have the right size of treble hook on there because what happens if you have too big of a treble like if you try to run a treble hook like this on this crankbait here it's going to kill the action of the bait because of the weight of the hook yet if you have too small a hook on the crankbait you're gonna lose fish when the fish hit it because you don't have enough enough bite on there. So ultimately you have to select the right size on there to get the best action out of the lure and to maximize your chance of catching the fish. So here's my rule of thumb on there. You don't ever wanna use a crankbait hook large enough to where your hooks will foul. See this one, they don't foul here, but a lot of crankbaits, even that comes out of the factory or if people put tr treble hooks on it, um, when, when they, when the hooks start flopping around like this, they'll get caught up on each other and get, and get tangled on each other right there. And actually, actually I just did it right there. That's what happens if you have a little bit too big of a hook on there. And what, and, and when you're casting it out there, not only this will affect the action, but when a fish hits it, you're going to lose it. You, people lose a lot of fish guys right there. Uh, that's a perfect example of what happens, uh, you know, simply because you know, they got two big hooks on there. So how you can get around that is a lot of times, like here, these are pretty small hooks, but you still have a longer shank. If you go to the short shank model, just buy you some short shank hooks. Gamagatsu is the, one, the ones I use. A short shank hook will allow you to use a little bit larger diameter, yet not have your hooks tangled up because the shank's uh, short. So one of the things that I recommend uh, on crankbaits, I do use a lot of short shanks, depending upon the crankbait. Some crankbaits like this, that the hook hangers are close together, you have to, but some crankbaits are a little far apart and you can get by with a little bit better there. Now, as far as, the, that's the hook shank, the, the shank length. Now, as far as the bite gap goes there, one of the things that, in my opinion, you have to have is the bite gap needs to be in correlation with the profile and the size of the crankbait. If you're using a larger crankbait, like like a, a deep diving crankbait that's you know two three inches long, four inches long sometimes, I like a larger gap simply because you got more mass there. You got when a fish hits it, you have a larger percentage of mass of plastic, so it just makes more sense to have a bigger bite gap. A lot of times you're using a little bit heavier line, so you can get by with it. But if you're using a smaller crankbait like this, you need to have a bite gap that's a little bit narrower on there and you need to have hook a hook diameter that's a little bit smaller simply because a smaller diameter hook will penetrate better and normally on on smaller crankbaits you're using a little bit lighter line 
But anyway, guys, hook, uh, the, we'll do a lot of stuff on hooks because it's pretty complicated. There's so many different selections out there. One of the things that I would suggest is um, just experiment. Try to find out what works for you. Personally, what I use is I use, there, there's a hook called the Gamagatsu G Finesse line of trebles. It's a uh, O'Shaughnessy bend. It's got a nano coating, which makes it real slick. And it's just about the perfect uh, shank length on there. So um, I'll put the uh, the Baitworks Gamagatsu link in the description here if you guys want to check out some of those. So anyway, hope it helps. And we'll do we'll do a lot more hook stuff. This is just skimming the surface here, guys. There's a lot more to do on it. We'll get into details on a lot more aspects in future videos. So thanks for tuning in. See you.